I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full service physical gold and silver company specializing in custom strategies to help you survive and thrive the reset. I mean, this is a total reset that it should be pretty obvious that we are already walking through. And we had some extra questions, so I'm going to answer them and we'll just jump right in. And the first one is from Jiz001. Any thoughts about the Bank for All Act, March 23rd, 2020, same day as Dow Bottom? Lots of thoughts on that, Jiz. In fact, Megan's going to put the link to a video that I did on that recently. But yeah, bottom line is, the Banking for All Act is a way for, for the central bank to introduce the digital dollar that is completely controlled by the Federal Reserve. I can't guarantee this yet, but I believe that they will use this to institute universal basic income on a regular basis, so every month or how, whatever that regular interval is going to be. And that should then be the start of the hyperinflationary period that, that we're looking for. So yeah, I have lots of thoughts about the Bank for All Act. And yeah, coincidence. You know, look, there are so many coincidences. Do you think they're all just, I don't know, coincidences? They basically will have full control over those accounts. I also think, here's something else I find really interesting. Have you noticed how long banks take to hold your money? I mean, you know, in our payroll, Megan, you issue the payroll on what day and how long does it take for the consultants and everybody to get paid? Usually about two to four business days. And uh, how many of them actually bank at the same bank that those funds are coming from? Do you know, Ish? Several. Okay, and it still takes them two to four business days? It's not instant? Yeah, correct. Okay, so I find that really interesting, and I'm sure a lot of you have had a similar experience where you go to wire money or money came in, wired, or et cetera, and yet there is a hold on it. The interesting thing about the Bank for All Act is that the Federal Reserve, and I mean, it's all, it's all digitized, it's all computerized, there's really no reason for any funds to be held, especially when it's a wire to wire, and in the same bank even. But the new Bank for All Act, this is about instant payments. Well, yeah, I don't want to wait two to four days for my money. Give it to me now. So they're doing a lot of things to get a easy adoption and compliance. And I'm not saying that, I mean, look, they're going to give you free money for a moment, although it's never really free. It'll just seem free to you. But just know that when this goes into play, and I don't think it's been fully passed yet, but it's going to happen. The Federal Reserve, I mean, it's all set up. It's going to happen. I mean, I can't guarantee it, but I'm like 99.99999% sure uh, because everything is now in place. The Fed's put everything in place. This law is, is going through uh, the government system. So, you know, uh, yeah, I have lots of thoughts about it, and I do not think it's coincidence that that was the bottom of the stock market because it's one of those things that basically it's another form of quantitative easing. But this form is to be used to, to, to get you in the system that they want. Does it mean that it's gonna be over then? That means, you know, I could be wrong. It's not something I can guarantee, but I'm pretty sure that that'll introduce the hyperinflation. And Ruben asks, how do you foresee that a stock portfolio will be valued after the currency reset? Is the value going to keep the same purchasing power? Well, let, let's do one of those questions at a time because there's really two. Um, as we've seen in, uh, and if you uh, mark this down, Megan, I'll pull that graph. If you remember in Venezuela, 
where they had the best performing stock market between, I believe it was 2012 and 2018. They lopped off the zeros. They're not done yet. They lopped off the zeros. The stock market was up here and it went boom down to here. It didn't go to zero, but it came very close as they reset the currency. They will be doing that more. So no, it doesn't retain the same purchasing power either. That's the whole point of a reset is a re it, what it really is, is a revaluation of that currency. So, um, yeah, there's your first and there's your, your second. I personally don't own any stocks. I, you know, it's the nominal value is one thing, but that does not, as we all know, that does not represent purchasing power value. A trillion times zero is zero. And Brad asks, not sure if you have commented much recently on House Bill 2558 introduced on 5719 detailing the conversation of the dollar into a gold-backed currency. Well, the reason why I haven't uh, commented on that recently is because it's stalled. And I've got to tell you, they cannot back the currency with gold because yet, yet, because as soon as they do, it creates restrictions around their ability to do the quantitative easing and grow all of this de debt and hyperinflate these debts away. Central banks and governments like inflation because it is easier to service debt. That is their strategy. That is their plan. That is part of the strategy that I created for myself that we execute at ITM Trading is doing exactly what the smartest guys in the room are doing for themselves. So, but is inflation really good for you and me? Oh, heck no. We can take advantage of it though, just like the government is setting up to do. But, you, but, but at that point you have zero purchasing power value. We, we don't have much right now and that's official, you know, so... Uh, yeah, I haven't said anything about it because I don't think it's going to happen, um, not for a really long time. And I also don't think that they're going to allow convertibility of dollars into gold again, but we'll see. Time will tell. And Gigi, uh, says, I listen, watch your videos on the economy often. Thank you, Gigi. The last one was focused on the upcoming economy and the changes that will happen in our currency. You mentioned during this video something about how the changes will affect the LIBOR. I wasn't sure what you were talking about. I have a so-called guaranteed annuity that is tied to the LIBOR. So in your opinion, how will these changes affect my annuity since they're tied to the LIBOR? Thanks in advance for clarifying your comment. Okay, so scroll back down, please. Thank you. So, um, okay, so the LIBOR is, is a stated interest rate benchmark that was created in the 80s. And you have trillions and trillions of dollars worth of contracts that are tied to that change. Now, those contracts represent two things. So going to your annuity, and most likely, because obviously I haven't read your annuity contract, but typically any of the contracts that are uh, to the retail public, like a guaranteed annuity or a mortgage or something like that, there is language in that contract that allows the issuer to change that benchmark. Now, for derivatives and for other things, yeah, that's a whole lot more complicated. And I'm actually going to do an update on it probably next week because I just started gathering some more data on it. But here's the key about the LIBOR, actually. The LIBOR, all of the values of all of these contracts that are held in all these financial institutions, banks, central banks, fintech, et cetera, all of them have a value based upon the LIBOR. If they change that benchmark, 
and they've been struggling to do that. They haven't been able to create the market or inspire enough use of the new benchmark. But when and if that actually comes to fruition, the valuations on all of those contracts, whether it's your annuity or a mortgage or a derivative contract or a loan or a credit card or anything, all of that debt, the valuation changes. That will wreak havoc, even if they manage to pull this off. And frankly, I don't think they will, and I don't think they have, because in the Main Street Lending Program, you know, through this crisis and all the new debts and all of that that they've issued, the Federal Reserve came out with that lending, uh, Main Street Lending Program, and they could have actually, in my opinion, apparently that's not true, but in my opinion, with how much new debt they were issuing, they could have created that market that's been so elusive to them. And they chose not to. They chose the fallback on the LIBOR. So what that tells me is that they couldn't create that new market. And is all the rest of this a coincidence? I'm going to let you decide that. I think that there are far too many coincidences for all of these to be a coincidence. And I'll go back to what happened on March 23rd and the bottom. Not a coincidence. Not a coincidence. Appears to be, but not. So your guarantee, by the way, is based upon the claims paying ability of that insurance company. And they've been having a lot of, of uh, issues around it because of this low rate environment. So I, I would look into the company a whole lot more, see what their derivative positions are, see what they're holding to guarantee that because that's the only guarantee that they can actually pay it. And that's questionable. In my opinion, that is highly questionable at this point in time. And Christopher asks, hmm, which country do you think will fare best over the next five to 10 years? Wow, that's a good question. If you could move to any country in the world, which would it be? <sighs> you know, I was just talking about that with Patrick over at Silver Bullion. Um, and that interview was fantastic, by the way, so I'm sure it'll come out here pretty quickly. But, you know, I got to tell you, this is a global issue. I think the countries that will fare the best are those that have the most in gold reserves. Those are going to be the ones that will remain in control. And why China and Russia, and I'm not saying I would not move to either China or Russia, frankly, but, uh, you know, I think that they will rise in power because of the gold holdings. So when I think about it, the countries that I think will fare the best over the next five to 10 years will be the ones that have the highest gold reserves. And I don't know that I would move anywhere, maybe New Zealand, because I hear how fabulous it is and I haven't been there yet. But Nathan asks, is it legal for the Federal Reserve to provide state and local governments unlimited credit lines? Let me tell you, legal is a matter of opinion anymore. I think there's a lot of things that aren't, they might be technically legal or they simply make them technically legal. So um, I don't know that that is technically, uh, I don't know that that's legal, but I think they modified things to make that legal. Uh, and Ahola Traveler, Ola, wait. Aloha. Aloha, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, see, it's been too long since we've been to Hawaii. We had to cancel our trip this year. I knew it looked familiar. How do you... <laughs> How do you see real estate doing during this new reset? I live in Hawaii uh -huh, and own some land and wondering if I should hold or sell. Well, you know, I think it's going to look typical, uh, you know, similar to what happened in Japan. And in that case, residential real estate dropped 85% and commercial real estate dropped 95%. 
So since there is so much land purchased on debt, if you do not have uh, gold and silver to make sure that you can pay that debt off, particularly gold, to pay that debt off, I think there's going to be a lot of real estate that comes on the market and there's going to be availability of bargains. That's part of the strategy is to be in a position to take advantage of those bargains. You got to have a place to live and you got to have a place to bug out to. If you're like me in the middle of a big city, you know, um, so there's, it's always about function for me, not so much about fiat, but yeah, I imagine that real estate will reset from these severe overvaluations. And OU Mike Gundy, why is silver following the stock market ups and downs? Oh, that's a great question. Well, part of silver has been really on a tear this year. You're going to see that more tomorrow. But silver is more of an industrial metal than gold is. So that's why it has a tendency to follow the stock market uh, more than gold actually does. But just keep in mind that those spot silver, spot gold, which is actually what you're referring to, they are intangible contracts. The premiums, there are still premiums in the physical silver market. So those aren't following the uh, stock market up and down, but the spot silver, those are contracts and it's more of an industrial metal. So it would do that. So as I said, we just had an interview with Patrick Vieira on Silver Bullion TV. And it'll be interesting to see what he does with it. First of all, it was a phenomenal interview. I knew I would enjoy it. He's so bright. He does such a good job. But when we, we, we kept chatting after he closed it, and I, you know, it was such a good conversation that I believe he kept recording it. So we'll see what that looks like, but you definitely, that would be one to listen to. It was a great conversation. I completely enjoyed it. Next week, this should also be a super interesting conversation. Now, I this is a new person to me, Jason Hartman, and he is really all about real estate. For So for those of you that have real estate questions, this would be a good one for you to watch. Have no idea what he's going to ask me, where we're going to go with it. Should be really interesting. But make sure that you continue to send in your questions on this or, or anything else that comes up for you to questions at itmtrading.com. And of course, you'll find all the links for everything on our blog. And uh, Megan, will you repost that? that link for that I just did yes. on that bill that's going through yes. banking for all. So you'll be able to find that there as well. If you like this, please give us a thumbs up. Make sure you share all of these. I mean, we're in the middle of a reset. We're not at the worst part of it yet. That is coming. Unfortunately, that is coming. You need to be prepared. And you do that because it is 100% Time to cover your assets. Doing it with the Wealth Shield strategy that encompasses your ability to sustain your standard of living, also maintain your wealth, and then further even grow your wealth. And it's simple. It's logical. You'll be able to understand it. And, and everybody at ITM is trained in this and I created it for myself. So if you're doing this strategy, it's customized and tweaked for you, but it's exactly the same one that we're doing, that I'm doing myself. So until tomorrow, we're going to do another live event tomorrow because I didn't get to finish up everything that I wanted on that. So you'll see me tomorrow too. And until then, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.